October 1852 Epistle Eighth General Epistle of the Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints From Great Salt Lake Valley to the Saints Scattered Throughout the Earth Greeting Beloved Brethren, Every returning season presents new scenes and subject for our contemplation, and mercies and blessings, renewed and multiplied, to call forth songs of praise and gratitude and thanksgiving to our Heavenly Father, who is causing the light of the gospel of His dear Son to shine farther and farther, and with greater effulgence from day to day, until even now the four quarters of the earth and the islands of the sea are beginning to bask in the sunshine of eternal truth, and the cheering sound of salvation is beginning to be heard by a multitude of nations, and Israel is coming home in crowds, like doves to their windows. Since our last epistle of April 18th, the God of Abraham has blessed his saints in the valley. The heavens have been propitious in their season, and the earth has produced abundantly. And although we had ice three-fourths of an inch thick on the 22nd, and the ground was covered with snow on the 23rd, and it snowed and hailed through the 24th of April, and the earth was white with snow on the 2nd of May, and there were several slight hailstorms, and one severe one on the 13th of July, and many severe winds during the season. Yet showers of rain, accompanied by thunder and lightning, have been multiplied beyond any previous season, which has saved much labor in irrigation. The days and nights have been warm, and vegetation was unusually rapid, and grain and vegetables have been produced in abundance, and peaches and grapes of a most excellent quality have arrived to perfection. July 27, the thermometer ranged from 127 degrees on the 28th and 29th, 114 degrees in the sun, and in our coolest room at 94 degrees, and yet the refreshing breezes from the mountains and Great Salt Lake enabled the husbandman to continue his labors, and the meteoric appearances in the heavens have added a beauty and sublimity to life in the mountains. The first snow this fall fell on the highest mountain where old snow has lain all summer, on the 15th September, and the first frost to injure vines in the city was on the 26th September. From the 22nd of April to the 21st of May, we spent our time, accompanied by several engineers and near 50 of the brethren, in visiting all the settlements south of this territory, and many places which had not before been visited, instructing, comforting, and blessing the saints, selecting new locations, forming acquaintance with, and striving to promote peace among the different bands of Indians, and by the blessings of heaven, accomplished all we could reasonably anticipate, and have since visited Provo and other branches of the church. There have been less disturbance and outbreaks among the Indians than during previous seasons. Some are beginning to know the value of bread, and are willing to labor a part of their time and learn how to work to raise corn for themselves. And we recommend to all the settlements to cultivate this spirit, and learn the Indians to raise grain, and live by their labor rather than steal, starve, or live by begging, as the game is source in their hunting grounds. The chiefs and braves of the Utes and Shoshone or Snake Indians, which tribes had long been at variance, met in this city September 4th, and formed a treaty of peace, perpetual peace, good peace as they say, in presence of the governor and Indian agent, and the present appearance is an indication of peace among the Indians generally in this region. Considerable advances have been made in tanning leather, machinery for making nails, iron factory, potteries, and other articles of domestic products, though help has been so scarce this season that it was necessary to devote a great share of it to the raising of grain to meet the demand of the great emigration through to California, and the immigration of about 10,000 saints, which have arrived, or the last are expected in this week, and most of them are scattering throughout the territory, strengthening the weaker settlements and forming new ones, and opening farms to raise all the grain they can for an increase of the emigrating saints another season. The wool produced in the valley has been manufactured into useful domestic articles, mostly by family industry, as well as every other article of produce which could be manufactured without much machinery though factories and mills and labor-saving machinery of all kinds have received all the attention we could possibly grant, and all of which will receive a new impetus after securing this harvest. A specimen of pig iron from the furnace in Iron County was presented at the October conference as good as could be expected for the first, and from this time the founders will be relieved from returning to sustain themselves and have other assistance which they need to prosecute their business and soon we expect a good supply of iron ware or home manufacture. 
Pieces of coal have been found in several creeks and canyons, and we anticipate pits will soon be found for general use. An extensive and valuable bed of sulfur has recently been discovered, and stone and marble of excellent quality, and all attention to surveys and discoveries of those things which may be most useful is given so far as time and numbers will permit. The saints in the valley are feeling well, doing well, rejoicing in God, diligent in business, prospering abundantly in every lawful undertaking, and growing more faithful in keeping the commandments of God, and paying their tithing, and building up the kingdom every year. The stone wall around the temple block was commenced August 3rd, and if the fall and winter shall prove as favorable as the last, will probably be completed before spring, ready for the brick or adobes which are to surmount it. Cash is scarce, though more plenty than it was, and will continue to improve as domestic manufacturers improve. We dig for gold or silver, but depend on our friends to dig and bring it to us while we are digging after richer treasures. The state house at Fillmore City is progressing, and the county of Millard is fast being settled. The tide of emigration is southward, and Fillmore City bids fair, soon to be the center of business. Territorial affairs are all quiet here, and, for aught we know, at the seat of the general government, the laws of the last legislature are published, though they seem to, to be but little use for them, for the people generally are disposed to do right, and there are few or no suits before the district or magistrate court, courts, and even the great emigration through to California behaved more respectably and troubled our courts much less than during the previous seasons. From the best dates we now have, it is estimated that there are now over 30,000 inhabitants in the territory. Elders Ezra T. Benson and Jedediah M. Grant returned August 11th from their mission to Potawatomi, which they left almost entirely vacated by the saints, who were now in the valley, many of whom began to prepare to come over the plains with hand carts and wheelbarrows. But when the Lord saw they were determined to come home at all hazard, he opened the way to have the wagons and teams even to the last family that wanted to come, and so will it continue to be with the saints who are determined to come home to Zion according to counsel. The saints were late in their emigration this year, and for the last two or three weeks have offered from occasional snowstorms in the mountains, which retarded their progress and helped to make them short of provisions, but some two hundred or more teams and wagons went from the valley to their assistance taking to the various camps some forty or fifty thousand pounds of flour, and large supplies of vegetables, which enabled them to come in in safety. Elders John Taylor, Erastus Snow, and Franklin D. Richards arrived also August 11, on return from their missions to Europe, Elder Taylor having brought apparatus for an extensive sugar factory, which he is locating at Provo, Utah County, and Elder Richards brought two large globes, three feet each, to present to the University of Deseret. The Book of Mormon is now in print in the English, Welsh, French, German, Danish, and Italian languages, and preparations are making to translate and publish it in Chinese, Burmese, Spanish, and other languages. A special conference of the elders was held at the Tabernacle on the 28th and 29th of August, which was fully attended, and a most animating spirit prevailed, when many elders were selected and set apart for their various missions as follows. Europe England, Daniel Spencer, Charles A. Harper, Isaac Allred, John Van Cott, Mullen Atwood, Chancy G. Webb, Charles Smith, Sylvester H. Earle, David Grant, Thomas W. Trent, Benjamin Brown, James T. Park, Peregrine Sessions, Osmond M. Duell, John A. Hunt, James Puse, William Burgess, Jr., Levi Nickerson, William Glover, Edward Martin, Levi E. Reiter, John S. Fulmer, Richard Cook, John Oakley, William Clayton, William Pitt, John C. Hall, William Woodward, James G. Willie, Daniel D. MacArthur, Moses Thurston, John Perry, William Empey, Spicer Crandall, John Mayer, Elias Gardner, Noah T. Gaiman, Ireland, Daniel Toner, John MacDonald, Wales, Dan Jones, Daniel Daniels, Thomas Jeremy, France, Andrew L. Lumereau, Germany, George Mayer, George C. Reiser, Jacob F. Sechrist, William Taylor, Berlin, 
Orson Spencer, Jacob Houts, Moses Clow, Norway, Eric G. M. Hogan, Canute Peterson, Denmark, George Percy, Gibraltar, Edward Sorensen, Nathan T. Porter, Asia, Hindustan, Nathaniel V. Jones, Amos M. Musser, William Fotheringham, Samuel A. Woolley, William F. Carter, Richard Ballantyne, Truman Leonard, Robert Owen, Robert Skelton, Siam, Chancy W. Wess, Cern Hodgkiss, China, Hosea Stout, James Lewis, Chapman Duncan, Africa, Cape of Good Hope, Jesse Haven, Leonard I. Smith, William Walker, Nova Scotia and British Provinces in America, John Robinson, Benjamin T. Mitchell, A. D. L. Buckland, Joseph Millet, West Indies, Jesse Turpin, Alfred B. Lamson, Darwin Richardson, Aaron Furr, British Guiana, James Brown, Elijah Tommins, Texas, Preston Thomas, Williams Camp, Washington Jolly, New Orleans, John Brown, St. Louis, Horace S. Eldridge, Iowa, Daniel Miller, Washington City, Orson Pratt, Australia, Augustus Farnham, Josiah W. Fleming, John Hyde, Paul Smith, Barr Frost, James Graham, William Hyde, John S. Eldridge, Absalom P. Dowdle, Sandwich Isles, William McBride, Ephraim Green, Edgerton Snyder, James Lawson, Thomas Cairns, Nathan Tanner, Reddick N. Allred, Redden A. Allred, Benjamin F. Johnson. About 74 of those elders whose missions were to the Eastern Continent and some of the British provinces left about the 15th of September, journeying by way of the South Pass and Missouri River, accompanied by Elder Orson Pratt of the Quorum of the Twelve, who was appointed at the same conference on a mission to Washington City, and to preside over the Saints in the United States and the British provinces in North America. President Orson Hyde arrived with his family from Pottawatomi, September 21st. Elder Parley P. Pratt is within the territory on his way from Chile, South America, and is expected soon. Elders Amasa Lyman and Charles C. Rich are at San Bernardino, expecting to leave on the 1st of November, and be at this place the 1st of December. Elder Lorenzo Snow arrived a few days since from Malta. Elders Wilford Woodruff and George A. Smith are in the valley, where all the Twelve Apostles are expected to spend the winter except Orson Pratt. August 3rd, Bishop Abraham O. Smoot arrived with 31 wagons and about 250 saints, the first company who have emigrated from England by means of the Perpetual Emigrating Fund, and their arrival was hailed with the greatest demonstrations of joy by the saints in the valley and met with a hearty response by the camp. The funds of the emigrating company are safe in stock, wagons, etc., but the scarcity of cash will prevent the company from extending that existence abroad. The coming spring, which we could wish, but let no one relax their exertions for the interest of the company, and greater will be the help when it does come. Six of the elders who were appointed on missions to Europe at the April conference started on the 4th of May, viz. John C. Armstrong, T. Margetts, J. Dolling, George Fenu, T. B. Broderick, and John Barker, and two more who had to leave to tarry till fall accompanied the late mission. Those elders who were appointed on foreign missions at the August conference and did not go east are expected to start on the southern route to California on Monday, next October 18th, and sail from San Francisco. The October conference commenced on Wednesday the 6th instant and closed on the Sunday following. During the whole time the tabernacle was filled to overflowing, and the time was mostly devoted to preaching, teaching, and exhortations, fasting, praying, praise, and thanksgiving, and the sacrament, and a portion of the time additional preaching was had out of doors for the benefit of the multitude who could find no room in the house. Elders Elam Luddington and Levi Savage Jr. were appointed on missions to Siam in place of Cern Hodgkiss and Harlow Redfield, who tarry at home. The First Presidency, the Twelve Apostles, and the officers of the several quorums were sustained in their several callings according to previous organization by the unanimous vote of the conference which voted also to commence the temple next spring. 
The news is cheering from all the various missions on the earth. Multitudes are believing and being baptized for the remission of their sins, while the wicked are opposing and, in places, persecuting the saints, destroying their property, driving them from their homes, and reporting all manner of falsehoods concerning them. Let the wicked contend with the wicked, and while they are contending, let the elders preach the gospel to those who believe, that the work be not hindered. And where the saints cannot live in peace and worship God according to the dictates of their own consciences, being enlightened by the Spirit of Truth and the revelations of Jesus Christ, they may receive it as a sign that it is time for them to arise and flee to Zion, to come home, to come to a land amid the everlasting hills, which is coveted by none except the saints, and by them that they may dwell in peace and enjoy the religion of heaven and the good of their labors. The invitation is to all of every nation, kindred, and tongue who will believe, repent, and be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. Come home. Come to the land of Joseph, to the valleys of Ephraim, journeying as you shall be instructed by the presidency of the church in the nation where you are. Those who are accustomed to a warm climate and have the opportunity may journey to California and take counsel of the presidency at San Bernardino, and such will find themselves near home if they land at San Diego. Those who are accustomed to a colder climate may journey by way of New Orleans, where they will find Elder John Brown, whom we have sent to counsel the saints on their arrival, also Elder Horace S. Eldridge at St. Louis, and Elder Henry Miller at Pottawatomie. Come up to the building of the house of the Lord, O ye saints, from the four quarters of the earth. For as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, so would the Lord Jesus gather you, in these last days, and now is the time for you to come, while the nations of the earth are at peace, and plenty covers the land. You know not how soon your way may be hedged by the sword, or stayed by the hand of the famine, for the Saviour said, while here on earth, that there would be wars and famine, even bloodshed and consumption upon the face of the whole earth, but the nations will not believe it until it comes upon them. Listen to the voice of your teachers, listen to the counsel of the elders of Israel whom we send unto you. For, inasmuch as this is verily the work of God in which we are engaged, you will find their words a light unto your feet, a lamp to your path, and the Holy Spirit will dwell with those who live by their precepts. We shall not have to say to you, as did the ancient apostle to the saints, Ye have many masters, but few fathers. O ye elders of Israel, be ye fathers to the household of faith. Ye shepherds of Israel, feed the flock of God and seek his pleasure, and not your own, in all things, and teach the saints to be subject to the powers that be, wherever they are. Let the rich saints gather up the poor, and help them home, and let the poor give their ob obligations to repay the same, as soon as their arrival at home, and they have means, and let them help themselves to the utmost of their ability, and not be dependent upon the rich. If all the saints in any kingdom or branch of the church were as anxious for themselves as Jesus is for them, and they were all united in faith and means as the heart of one man, they would find means enough to help them all to Zion without delay, while those who can come and wait for better times, more means, and easier carriages to ride in, will wait in vain. And if they obtain the object of their search, they will do it through sorrow and much tribulation. We want paints, oil, glass, parry, nails, house trimmings, seeds for hedges and all choice fruits, vegetables and flowers, cotton and wool machinery, and all kinds of labor-saving machinery. There are three more carding machines wanted in the valley next season. Sheep and young stock will find a good market to any amount. Fifty tons of cotton yarn are wanted at the present moment for family use. Who will bring these things? All the saints. Bring all your spare silver and gold precious stones and curiosities and antiquities and everything that will tend to build, beautify, and adorn the temple of the Most High. And with meek and humble hearts and prayer and praise and fasting and thanksgiving, come up to the help of the Lord against the mighty, and you shall receive your reward in ordinances, in blessings, in salvation. And we pray our Heavenly Father that he will inspire your hearts to works of righteousness and guide you by his Spirit continually and enable you to abide his law until you are made perfect and prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, Willard Richards, Great Salt Lake City, October 13, 
1852.